Arches of Foot, Introduction Arches of the foot help in fast walking, running, and jumping. In addition, these help in weight bearing and in providing upright posture. The foot is really unique to human being. Arches are supported by intrinsic and extrinsic muscles of the soul in addition to ligaments, aponeurosis, and shape of the bones. Footprints are not complete due to the arches. The foot has to suffer from many disorders because of tight shoes or high heels which one wears for various reasons. The foot has to act, one as a pliable platform to support the body weight in the upright posture, and two as a lever to propel the body forwards in walking, running or jumping. To meet these requirements, the human foot is designed in the form of elastic arches or springs. These arches are segmented, so that they can best sustain the stresses of weight and of thrusts. The presence of the arches makes the soul concave. This is best appreciated by examining footprints which show the weight-bearing parts of the soul, Fig 13.1. An arched foot is a distinctive feature of man. It distinguishes him from other primates. The arches are present right from birth, although they are masked in infants by the excessive amount of fat in their soles. Classification of arches 1. Longitudinal medial lateral 2. Transverse anterior posterior formation or structure of arches Medial longitudinal arch This arch is considerably higher, more mobile, and resilient than the lateral. It is considered as a big arc of a small circle. Its constitution is as follows ends. The anterior end is formed by the heads of the first, second, and third metatarsals. The phalanges do not take part in forming the arches. The posterior end of this arch is formed by the medial tubercle of the calcaneum. Summit. The summit of the arch is formed by the superior articular surface of the body of the talus. Pillows. The anterior pillar is long and weak. It is formed by the talus, the navicular, the three cuneiform bones, and the first three metatarsal bones. The posterior pillar is short and strong. It is formed by the medial part of the calcaneum. The main joyet of the arch is the talocalcanean navicular joint. Lateral longitudinal arch. This arch is characteristically low, has limited mobility, and is built to transmit weight and thrust to the ground. It is considered as a small arc of a big circle. This is in contrast to the medial longitudinal arch which acts as a shock absorber. The constitution of the lateral longitudinal arch is as follows. Ends. The anterior end of the arch is formed by the heads of the fourth and fifth metatarsal bones. The posterior end is formed by the lateral tubercle of the calcaneum. The summit lies at the level of the articular facets on the superior surface of the calcaneum at the level of the subtalar joint. Pillows. The anterior pillar is long and weak. It is formed by the cuboid bone and by the fourth and fifth metatarsals. The posterior pillar is short and strong. It is formed by the lateral half of the calcaneum. Main point. The main ointment of the arch is the calcaneocuboid joint. Anterior transverse arch. The anterior transverse arch is formed by the heads of the five metatarsal bones. It is complete because the heads of the first and fifth metatarsals both come in contact with the ground, and form the two ends of the arch. Posterior transverse arch. The posterior transverse arch is formed by the greater parts of the tarsus and metatarsus. It is incomplete because only the lateral end comes in contact with the ground, the arch forming a half dome which is completed by a similar half dome of the opposite foot. Factors responsible for maintenance of arches. In general, the factors helping in maintaining the various arches are as follows, one shape of the bones concerned, two intersegmental ties slash staples or ligaments, and muscles, that hold the different segments of the arch together, three tie beams or hum springs that connect the two ends of the arch, four slings that keep the summit of the arch pulled up. Each of these factors is considered below. Five suspension. Bony factor. The posterior transverse arch is formed, and maintained mainly because of the fact that many of the tarsal bones involved, e.g. the cuneiform bones, and the heads of the metatarsal bones, are wedge-shaped, the apex of the wedge pointing downwards. 
the bony factor is not very important in the case of the other arches. Intersegmental ties. All arches are supported by the ligaments uniting the bones concerned. The most important of these are as follows, 1, the spring ligament for the medial longitudinal arch. 2, the long and short plantar ligaments for the lateral longitudinal arch. 3, in the case of the transverse arch, the metatarsal bones are held together by the interosseous muscles also. 4, tie beams. 5, the longitudinal arches are prevented from flattening by the plantar aponeurosis, and by the muscles of the first layer of the sole. These structures keep the anterior and posterior ends of these arches pulled together. In the case of the transverse arch, the adductor hallucis acts as a tie beam. Slings. The summit of the medial longitudinal arch is pulled upwards by tendons passing from the posterior compartment of the leg into the sole, i.e. tibialis posterior, flexor hallucis longus, flexor digitorum longus. 2. The summit of the lateral longitudinal arch is pulled upwards by the peroneus longus and peroneus brevis. 3. The tendons of tibialis anterior and peroneus longus together form a sling, stirrup, which keeps the middle of the foot pulled upwards, thus supporting the longitudinal arches. 4. As the tendon of the peroneus longus runs transversely across the sole, it pulls the medial and lateral margins of the sole closer together, thus maintaining the transverse arches. The transverse arch is also supported by tibialis posterior which grips many of the bones of the sole through its slips. Suspension. 1 medial longitudinal arch tibialis anterior 2 lateral longitudinal arch peroneus longus. Functions of arches. 1 the arches of the foot distribute body weight to the weight bearing areas of the sole, mainly the heel and the toes. Out of the latter, weight is borne mainly on the first and fifth toes. The lateral border of the foot bears some weight, but this is reduced due to the presence of the lateral longitudinal arch. 2. The arches act as springs, chiefly the medial longitudinal arch, which are of great help in walking and ruining. 3. They also act as shock absorbers in stepping and particularly in jumping. 4. The concavity O1. The arches protects the soft tissues of the sole against pressure. 5. The character of medial longitudinal arch is resiliency and that of lateral longitudinal arch is rigidity. Summary. The arches of the foot are well-known features of the foot. There are two longitudinal arches, i.e. medial longitudinal arch and lateral longitudinal arch, table 13.1. In addition there are two transverse arches, i.e. posterior transverse arch and an anterior transverse arch. The medial longitudinal arch is the most important and is primarily affected in pes planus and pes cavus. This arch is formed by the calcaneus, navicular, three cuneiforms and medial three metatarsals. Flattening of the arch is common and is assessed clinically. The medial arch is supported by, spring ligament which supports the head of the talus. Plantar aponeurosis as a tie beam. Abductor hallucis and flexor digitorum brevis which act as spring ties. Tibialis anterior which lifts the center of the arch. This muscle also forms a stirrup-like support with the help of peroneus longus muscle. Tibialis posterior adducts the mid-tarsal joint and supports the spring ligament. Flexor hallucis longus extending between the anterior and posterior ends also supports the head of talus. The lateral one lori git udinal arch is formed by calcaneum, cuboid, fourth and fifth metatarsals. It is rather shallow and gets flattened on weight bearing. This arch is supported by long plantar ligament, short plantar ligament. Plantar aponeurosis acts as a tie beam flexor digitorum brevis, flexor digiti minimi and as a tie beam abductor digiti minimi act as tie beams. Peroneus longus, peroneus brevis, and peroneus tertius support this arch. Posterior frons reus arch is formed by three cuneiforms and cuboid. This arch extends across the sole in a coronal plane. It is only a half arch, the other half gets completed by the other foot. This arch is supported by the ligaments binding the bones. It gets specific support from the tendon of peroneus longus as it extends from the lateral side to the medial side of the sole inferior frons reus arch also lies in coronal plane. It is formed by the heads of five metatarsals. During weight bearing, 
the metatarsal heads flatten out. This arch is supported by intermetatarsal ligaments and the intrinsic muscles of the sole. The transverse head of adductor hallucis holds the heads of metatarsals together. Clinical anatomy absence or collapse of the arches leads to flat foot, piece planus, which may be congenital or acquired. The effects of a flat foot are as follows. A loss of spring in the lute lead to a clumsy shuffling gait. B. Loss of shock absorbing function makes the foot more liable to trauma and osteoarthritis. Loss of the concavity of the sole leads to compression of the nerves and vessels of the sole. Compression of the communication between the lateral and medial plantar nerves causes neuralgic pain in the forefoot, metatarsalgia. Compression of blood vessels may cause vascular disturbances in the toes. Exaggeration of the longitudinal arches of the foot is known as PCS corns. This is usually a result of contracture, plantar flexion, at the transverse tarsal joint. When dorsiflexion of the metatarsophalangeal joints, and plantar flexion of the interphalangeal joints, due to atrophy of lumbricals and interossei, are suprad, the condition is known as clawfoot. The common causes of peace cavus and clawfoot are spina bifida and poliomyelitis, figs 13.8a to d and 13.9. Other deformities of the foot are as follows. A. Talipes equines in which walks on toes with patient walks on toes with the heel racist. Talipes selctias in which the patient walks on heel with the forefoot raised. Talipes rams in which the patient walks on the outer border of foot which is inverted and adducted, see fig 10.13. D. Talipes ro slash gus in which the patient walks on inner border of foot which is everted and abducted. E commonest deformity of the foot is Folipes equin warflow s, flubjua. In this condition the foot is inverted, adducted art plantar flexed. The condition may be associated with spina bifida. Talipes, club foot, may be of two types, talipes calcaneo valgus foot is dorsiflexed at ankle joint, everted at mid-tarsal joints. Talipes equinovarus foot is plantar flexed at ankle joint and inverted at mid-tarsal joints. Talus is the summit of medial longitudinal arch of the foot. Important joint of medial longitudinal arch is talocalcania navicular joint. Main supports of this arch are tibialis posterior, tibialis anterior, and peroneus longus muscles. Important ligaments of the arch are spring or plantar calcania navicular, interosseous talocalcanian. Arches distribute the weight evenly to the ground. Great toe through its two sesamoid bones transfers double the weight of the other toes. Important joint of lateral longitudinal arch is calcaneocuboid joint. Its main supports are tendon of peroneus longus, long plantar and short plantar ligaments. Posterior transverse arch is supported by tendon of peroneus longus muscle. Anterior transverse arch is supported by deep metatarsal ligaments and dorsal interossei muscles.